a lot of bad things have happened because of this materialist worldview. Because on a naturalistic, materialist, materialist worldview, all we really are, all humans really are, are just bags of cells, bags of meat. Uh, negative. I am a meat popsicle. Welcome back everyone to Bridge the Divide, where I examine irrational beliefs, the irrational behaviors that often follow, and how we, with education, rationality, and reason, can bridge the societal divides that they create. Today, we're going to take a look at a video from the channel Om Seth, where the host, who, in order to avoid sounding like I'm constantly entering into a state of deep meditation I'll simply call Seth, makes the claim that atheists simply aren't being honest with themselves. Which of course, on its face, is a really weird claim to make, so it probably means that Seth here thinks that being an atheist entails holding to some specific philosophical or scientific position that it actually doesn't. Now, I don't know too much about Seth's personal religious leanings, because after going through his content, I see that he plays those cards pretty close to the vest. So at best, given the extreme nature of the subjects of some of his videos, I can pretty much conclude that he is a staunchly conservative fundamentalist Christian. And while that might give me some sort of a sense as to how he's going to approach this subject, if Seth's ultimate goal is to demonstrate how atheists are somehow deluding themselves by not being convinced that a God or God exists, then none of that is really going to play much of a role here because it's evidence that we are in fact looking for. So let's dive in and see exactly what the kid has for us. And yes, before anybody points it out in the comment section, I am fully aware that Seth is only 17 years old, so I will begrudgingly do my best to go easy on him. Oh, I'll believe that when we ship tons purple and smells like rainbow shopper. <laughs> What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about how atheists aren't honest with themselves and how their worldview is not consistent. So let's get into it. Well, before we do, Seth, I feel I should point out to you that for someone who puts forth their channel as a source for inspiring others to seek truth, kicking off your video by completely misrepresenting the group that you're addressing and subtly implying that you somehow have psychic access to these people's mental states is not going to work out too well for you. But just in case your false assertions weren't deliberate and were just an ignorant mistake, allow me to clear a few things up for you. First, atheism is a self-identifier that is used to describe when an individual does not hold to the belief that a god or gods exist. Second, being an atheist does not logically entail that that individual holds to any specific scientific or philosophical positions. This is why atheism is not a worldview. Third, the term that you're actually looking for to describe the worldview that you think is inconsistent is non-theistic, meaning a worldview that does not contain any god or gods within any of its constituent parts performing any kind of explanatory or predictive function. And lastly, there is no logical contradiction posed by the non-theistic worldview. So unfortunately, your claim of logical inconsistency consistency fails. However, I do think it's possible that we might be able to chalk all this up to a kind of philosophical versus colloquial usage of terminology. So let's press on from here, Seth, and we'll see if you've actually made the philosophical breakthrough of identifying a logical contradiction in the non-theistic worldview, or even better, if you have sufficient evidence for the existence of a god that would logically negate the non-theistic worldview. So, on an atheistic worldview, non-theistic, there is no real meaning into life. There's no purpose to life. It's just complete nihilism. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. This is already starting to sound eerily similar to that video that I collabed with the skeptic on. No, Seth, being an atheist does not entail a position of nihilism of any stripe. And asserting that the only two logically possible states are subjective meaning as dictated by a god or no meaning at all would of course be a false dichotomy. When it comes to deriving things like meaning, value, or purpose, instead of deriving these things from the subjectively interpreted assertions made in an ancient collection of books, and how the authority figures in our lives interpret those assertions for us during our formative years in the context of a worldview with a god figure that cannot be demonstrated to exist, we can simply derive them from ourselves. Now I know, Seth, that you're likely basing your conclusion on the very, very weird notion that if things like meaning and purpose and value are themselves subjective, meaning mind-dependent, then that renders them completely illusory and therefore non-existent. Which of course is false, because these things still exist as conceptualizations in the mind of the individual and therefore or have value to them. One thing that's really important to remember here, Seth, is the differentiation in the context in which we can use the word objective. Objective can either mean a proposition that is true, independent of the mind, or that something is true in accordance with the justification of holding to a subjective position or accomplishing a subjective task, such as how the rules of the game of chess are subjectively determined, 
But if the specific goal is to win a game of chess, then the rules are objectively true in accordance with accomplishing that goal. Ultimately, while value, meaning, and purpose are subjective, those valuations are objectively true for the individual as they pertain to that individual's subjectively determined actions and goals. Another way that the subjective nature of these things is excellently demonstrated is in the thought experiment that we call the trolley problem. I won't kill you. I also want to point out, Seth, that you are missing the very, very important logical entailment that if your god were to actually exist, then all of these various valuations would be necessarily subjective, as their very existence would be completely dependent upon the mind of the god. And as nothing exists to dictate to the god what any individual's purpose, meaning, or value must necessarily be, then any purpose dictated by the god is not only necessarily subjective, but it is also arbitrary. And by your own light, Seth, such valuations would be completely meaningless and non-existent. Because, you know, with just bags of meat, something exploded 14, 15, however, million, however many billion years ago it was. While I'm fairly certain, Seth, that you don't really care that much about cosmology, it's important to point out the possibility that your improper conclusions may be a result of science that's been misrepresented to you. First, nothing exploded, it was an inflation event, and second, current estimates based on the most recent predictive modeling indicate that that inflation event took place roughly 13.8 billion years ago. If you're going to open the door to scientific claims, Seth, then it is really important that you represent them accurately. And here we are now. And that just doesn't work. If you are asserting that what exists today could not possibly exist under our current predictive models, then you either have to show the logical contradiction, or provide the evidence that justifies your inclusion of a specific mechanistic causal factor that would make it possible. Put simply, like I mentioned before, you must first present the evidence that your god actually exists before you can assert that your god actually did anything. And until you're able to do any of those things, your assertion is just an argument from incredulity. And on a personal note, your inability or unwillingness to understand the current science that explains these things is not something you should be flaunting as a virtue. That's it. And then they still say that we can make up our own meaning. We can have subjective meaning. Yeah, because the fields of cosmology and psychology are not even remotely related, so I have no idea why you would think that. But that doesn't make any sense, because a lot of these, these atheists, they say, we need to follow the evidence, we need to seek the truth. And I agree that we need to follow evidence and seek the truth. Okay, so we seem to be on the same page. Socratic method for the win. Socrates. Hey, we know that name. Yeah! Hey, look him up! Oh, it's under Socrates. However, because you yourself are operating from a theistic worldview, then that sentiment would imply that you have some evidence to present that your god actually exists. Are you prepared to do that, or are you just going to stick with the logical fallacy route? But they're saying that. And then they're not seeking the truth because they're not being honest with themselves. Once again, Seth, you do not have psychic access to mine or anyone else's minds. So you have zero justification to assert what I am or am not being honest about. Unless, of course, you can actually demonstrate how any assertion I make deliberately misrepresents reality. In reality, all you can really point to is that my conclusion is different from yours, which would then, of course, demand an exploration of our justifications. My justification is predicated upon the independently verifiable evidence that allows us to generate highly accurate predictive models. I'm ready to hear your justification for your claims anytime now. And they're saying, okay, we should just make up our own meaning to make ourselves feel better about life. While that's a little more reductive than I normally would like, there is some psychological truth to that. But the interesting thing here, Seth, that you strangely seem to be missing is that you are in fact doing the exact same thing. You deriving your personal valuations or even your very conceptualization of a god from a specific ancient collection of books is is more appealing to you than what you think is logically entailed by not doing that. Because you yourself have fallaciously concluded that without a god, everything is reduced to nihilism, you are literally siding with the choice that makes you feel better. And if it's not a problem for you to do it, then how could you possibly hold that it's a problem for anyone else to? But that's not being honest with yourself, and that's not being truthful. We should be truthful. And the atheists, atheists that are truthful are the ones that admit that on their worldview, 
It's just complete nihilism. So now you're just repeating your claim and you have yet to provide any evidence to support it. Yes, there are atheists who may be moral nihilists or epistemic nihilists or even fallibilists, but none of those philosophical positions are logically entailed simply by being an atheist, nor are they logically entailed by the non-theistic worldview. I know this because I myself am an atheist, I hold to the non-theistic worldview, I am not a nihilist in any sense of the word, and I am still logically consistent. Like Frederick Nietzsche, at least Frederick Nietzsche admitted that there is no objective meaning, there is no objective morality, we're just kind of just here and it's completely meaningless, it's just a meaningless existence. Yeah, I can tell from that extraordinarily rudimentary assessment of Nietzsche that you're really not that familiar with the man's work. Boiling the epically mustachioed German philosopher down to one philosophical position is both insanely reductive and intellectually dishonest. But without resorting to an entire thesis on the man's life, suffice to say Nietzsche did not simply stop at things having no objective meaning or value, and he readily acknowledged that the lack of objective meaning and value empowered humans to be able to determine these things for themselves, and thus elevate ourselves to become something greater than we are, or what he coined as the Ubermensch, or Overman, even though he himself was far too cynical to ever believe that our species could ever accomplish such a grandiose task. This is what happens, Seth, when you rely solely upon the salad bar philosophy often presented by theistic authorities. We take what we want and leave the rest. The only parts you're going to get are the ones that support the narrative that they're trying to sell you. And modern day atheists, all of atheists nowadays just kind of lie to themselves and tell themselves, oh no, it's okay, it's okay, you know, we, we can make our own meaning, we can still have meaning, we can still live a good life, but we can still have hope for the future or whatever. That's the third time you've made that claim. I'm assuming you didn't give this little diatribe of yours much thought before you started recording. Are you going to be getting to your evidence anytime soon? Or at least to a syllogism that points out the logical contradiction entailed by the non-theistic worldview? Because if not, this whole thing is starting to sound like nothing more than an appeal to consequence fallacy. Your Honor, I object! And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case! Overruled. Good call! But on your worldview, you can't, because there is nothing objective about life. Everything is subjective. There is no, there's nothing to live for. And that would be the appeal to consequence fallacy that I mentioned. That whole thing may be your very sad take on life, but it is certainly not mine. I can honestly tell you that all of the things that I have built and attained throughout my life through my hard work and dedication have extreme value to me. In fact, if your God, and by extension an eternal existence in heaven, were to exist, then everything in this life would be rendered meaningless. What you view as a heaven is literally akin to a hell for me. The fact that things do not exist eternally is what gives them meaning, at least it does for me. That life and the whole of human experience is finite is what makes it so infinitely valuable. And I personally wouldn't change that for anything. And given that I've derived the highest meaning, value, and purpose from this temporary existence, and you're the one that requires the existence of an external god figure, one you can't even demonstrate to exist, to dictate your meaning to you, lest you feel you'll succumb to complete and total existential nihilism, then I ask you, of the two of us, who is actually struggling? And they also say things like, that one of the most common arguments for atheists is the argument of evil. Yes, the problem of evil does indicate that a specific version of a god cannot exist. And while some atheists may use the Epicurean trilemma as a justification for their position in response to the assertion of that specific god, the trilemma itself does not logically entail atheism or even a non-theistic worldview as someone could acknowledge the trilemma and still be a deist, or they could just do what the Muslims do and acknowledge that their god is not all good and thus eliminate the problem in its entirety. And they say evil exists, therefore God isn't real, because why would God allow evil to happen? But then, uh, but they're assuming that there's a such thing as objective evil and objective good, and they have no way of proving that on their worldview. Sorry, Seth. It seems you've mixed up what an internal and external critique are. The problem of evil works as an internal critique, which means that it operates under the assumption that certain aspects of the theistic worldview, namely the attributes of the god, are true. It does not function like an external critique, in which appeals are made to standards that are not necessarily accepted by the worldview in question. I myself am a moral relativist, so I don't hold to any mind-independent form of what we call good or evil. However, you do hold that these things are objective 
objective in your worldview and that a god defined in a very specific way exists, which means that there are things in your worldview that can be exposed as being logically contradictory. All right, so that's the problem. Like they, they say, oh, suffering is bad. Why is suffering bad? Well, now you've switched from evil to suffering, which are completely different. I'm starting to think that you just grabbed these talking points from someone like Frank Turek or Made by Jim Bob. Big mistake. Which, if you did, would fully explain your inconsistency and the total lack of a presentation of any evidence. Who says it's bad? Why, why is suffering good, bad? And they say, okay, if things benefit society, it's good, and if it makes people suffer, it's bad. What is benefiting? What is beneficial? What is good? What is bad? They just go in circles and they can't answer it. They can't answer what's good and bad. Actually, we can, and if you'd even been bothered to actually talk to an atheist, your mistake could easily have been avoided. Typically, what we refer to as good or evil are those actions that consequently result in either an increase or decrease in well-being at both the individual and societal level. And yes, what those specific actions are are subjectively derived and subjectively agreed upon by the collective. Still, there's no actual problem here, Seth, which means that all of this is just another appeal to consequence fallacy. That you don't like that it's subjective is not a defeater and is a personal problem that you yourself must reconcile. So that's the main problem with atheism. They just, their arguments are, they can't use a moral arguments because they can't even prove that morality exists on their worldview. Okay, that doesn't even make sense. Morality is defined as the set of principles concerned with the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. But notice how that definition does not include what the terms good and bad themselves are indicating. So if a person possesses a set of principles concerning that distinction, then morality exists. This just seems to be an extension of how much you personally do not like the prospect of morality being entirely subjective. But once again, that is not a defeater for the non-theistic worldview. Because materialists, they, they, most of them are materialists, obviously. You can't get morality from just the physical. Because morality is not a physical thing. Well, that's just a lie. Because morality and the moral frameworks that we subscribe to come from our minds. And our minds at their foundation are emergent properties of our brains. It should also go without saying that atheism does not logically entail the position of materialism, naturalism, or physicalism. We're still waiting for a defeater here, Seth. It's not something that you can look, that you can look at, you can see in a test tube. But they're materialists, they only believe in the physical. But they believe in morality, and that's not a physical thing, so it's just completely inconsistent. True. Morality, like math, love, freedom, justice, and knowledge, are abstract concepts. But these concepts require a mind to exist, and minds are grounded in the physical. Also, materialists don't reject the existence of abstract concepts, as that would be patently absurd. That would be akin to claiming that because math isn't composed of physical material, then it doesn't actually exist. Materialists simply hold that the ontology of abstract concepts is grounded in the physical. I honestly have no idea where you got this, Seth, that materialism somehow entails that abstract concepts don't exist. But whoever you got it from did you a grave disservice. They're stealing a worldview that would only make, they're, they're stealing a theistic worldview. Okay, man, that doesn't even follow. The Christian worldview does not corner the market on anything, let alone morality. Christianity, like every other religious system before it, simply co-opted standards of social behavior that humans had figured out millennia before these systems raised their ugly heads. You seem to be coming a bit off the rails here, Seth. You may want to get back to that evidence or argumentation you implied you have that demonstrates how the non-theistic worldview is incoherent. While claiming to be just materialist, who just, you know, follow the evidence, but they're assuming that morality exists and they can't provide any evidence for that if they're atheists. Yeah, we can, as I've already explained. I can honestly say I'm getting a little tired of your ignorant gaslighting. So I'm going to give you one last chance to present your defeater, or I'm going to have to move on to someone who doesn't wield philosophy like a kid who's found their dad's gun. Or you could actually follow the evidence and see that there is a god, there is a higher power, there is more to life than just the physical, material existence. Well, here's your chance, Seth, to present that evidence we've waited patiently all video for. Lay it out for us and demonstrate the existence of your God. There is an objective meaning. There is a purpose to life. And you don't just make up your own meaning. You don't get to just do whatever you want. Oh, 
God, I'm sorry, that's just not the answer we were looking for. All I'm hearing are the same claims you've made before. Claims, by the way, predicated upon an appeal to consequence. Nobody cares that you don't like it. Stop dodging your burden of proof and present what you have. Unless, of course, the reason you're dodging is that you don't have anything to present. That's not how it works, and on an atheistic worldview, that's just not being honest with yourselves. So, you should be honest with yourselves and say, yeah, everything is nihilism if you want to be an atheist. And we're right back to square one. More gaslighting and complete philosophical bankruptcy. But to be completely honest with you, Seth, I really didn't expect much more than that. And we're gonna go ahead and skip this last section because it's just Seth once again confusing internal and external critiques, and then repeating the utterly erroneous claim that atheism entails that moral arguments cannot be utilized against God concepts. I also have to point out that Seth actually did another video in response to the multitude of comments pointing out how wrong he was in this video. But in that one, he just arrogantly doubles down on his original claim that atheism logically entails nihilism and winds up further entrenching himself in his philosophical bankruptcy. Remember how in the collab I did with the skeptic, I explained the psychological phenomenon that hitting someone with a deluge of facts is more apt to entrench them in their position than convince them otherwise? That's pretty much what his response video was. Now moving forward, I readily acknowledge that Seth's young age likely plays a major factor into his lack of understanding of these various philosophical topics that he's addressing, and that as an impressionable theist, he's likely just regurgitating the same nonsense he's heard a hundred times before from the various authority figures in his life and the various theistic channels that he is likely subscribed to. But even with that in mind, I think that this video provides a fantastic opportunity to bridge the divide. It's obvious Seth possesses a major interest in these topics, and given how little he understands about them, that puts him in a most advantageous position, as he now has the opportunity to dive into these topics and learn about them in detail. This way, in the future, he can more readily recognize things like the various fallacies he committed, and he'll be able to recognize how others around him are committing those fallacies, and he'll be less apt to commit them himself. I also think it's a great opportunity to open the lines of communication, because, while I could be wrong on this, it seems like Seth has never actually talked directly to an atheist and asked them questions about the various positions in their worldview. Remember, Seth, as much as some people may try to convince you otherwise, not knowing something is not a position of weakness, it's actually a position of strength, because not knowing means that you have the opportunity to learn something new and thus apply it to your worldview. And it is through that exploration of new information and the mutual exchange of ideas that you'll be able to actually encompass the message of your channel, and will finally be able to make the cohesive progress that I'm certain that we both want to see in the world. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And be sure to leave a comment below. I love reading your responses, and those interactions help with the dreaded algorithm. Don't forget, July is National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. A link to where you can support these important efforts is down in the description. And if you love scary movies, be sure to check out me and my filmmaker friends over at the Week in Horror podcast, now in our fifth season. Everything you need to become a channel member here, get yourself some official Bridge the Divide gear, or support the podcast is down in the description. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support of this channel, and as always, be safe, be excellent to each other. And together, we can bridge the divide.